Doran was out of breath and his feet were aching. He had run as long as his body would allow and taken only minimal breaks to pant, and now his body was close to overheating. The dizziness slowly crept into his conscious mind, fuzzing up his thoughts and making it hard to move. But he had made it. With one final effort, he pushed open the swinging door to the spacer's lounge and immediately collapsed on the ground. One of the attendants was quick to help him to a chair and brought him a glass of water and a pitcher, while in the meantime the collective gaze of all waiting crew members and captains gathered solely on him. He greedily gulped down the water, spilling most of it in the process, but finally he found the strength to form words. Pirates, the wind farm, they jumped into low orbit. A murmur ran through the assembled crowd. Fellow spacers began to discuss with their heads stuck together. For a moment Doran had hope. This was their outpost as well. Surely they would stand up to defend it. The next Galactic Council station was days away from here, even with direct jumps. Doran's friends and his sister, back at the wind farm, only had a chance if the private vessels came to their aid. But no one came forward. He heard heated arguments of what should be done, captains and first officers drawing up elaborate plans and discarding them at once. They had a whole array of excuses. They had an important dignitary to protect, valuable cargo to lose, and most of all, they did not want to provoke the pirate horde to attack this outpost as well. After all, families with children lived here, many more than on the wind farm. Doran's eyes scanned the idle crowd, almost all averted their gaze rather than meet his, almost all except one. In the back of the lounge, hidden partially behind an acne officer, sat a man, Belaney, shipborne or whatever they were called that day, and he was staring right back at Doran. His uniform was a dirty, pale green and rigged with dozens of pouches and devices. On his chest, a kinetic gun was holstered. Doran did not know this model, but it looked capable of punching a hole into any ship's hull, safe for military vessels. Two steely grey eyes bored into him, sizing him up, betraying nothing as to what the mind behind them was thinking. Doran shivered inwardly at the thought of asking this being in particular. Berlaini were despised by most other members of the galactic community, and not without reason. They were savage, violent, and cunning. And savagery and violence was what they sold to whoever was asking. As mercenaries, they were known and feared, led only by their own code, of which no one else had been able to make sense of. As business people, they were mistrusted, though it was seldom heard for them to ever break a contract. But Doran retained eye contact. The people on the wind farm needed help now, and his morality would certainly not save their lives. He almost shrunk when the Bellany rose to his full height, nearly a third taller than Doran, and walked towards him with steps too light for his size. Doran had only heard stories of the Bellany, the shipborne. He knew they seemed fairly unassuming, but in truth had never shaken off the characteristics of the predatory primate they had evolved from. It was said that thousands of years ago, in their lust for blood, they had nearly destroyed themselves and had been forced to flee their world into the void, damning themselves to an existence as fighting nomads. And while their individual strength was under debate and their intelligence average, their endurance was endless, their eyes were cold and their teeth were sharp, literally as well as figuratively. The man sat in front of Doron and refilled the glass. It took Doran another few seconds before he found the courage to speak. If you would come to our aid in this time of need, we will gladly give all we can. Just name a price. The man bared his teeth in that horrible grin that the Bellany liked to do and pushed the refilled glass back to Doran. You wouldn't be able to afford us, he said, the accent sounding somehow malicious with the consonants too sharp and the vocals too straight. Doran opened his mouth to protest, but the man held up his hand. A single broadside of our railguns requires enough energy to power the entire outpost for most of a day. 
A single KEP costs more than I earn in four months. Deploying our Void Battalion to secure the farm would drain the entire project budget with the costs for ammunition, medical and fuel. He paused and tore his praying eyes from Doran and glanced back at the remaining collection of staring shipfolk. But a good spacer answers to a call for help.